Hi everybody, welcome to my little paintbrush. I'm glad you're here to paint with me. My name is Miss Cammy, and we get to paint the Three Wise Men. Let me show you this awesome painting. Very simple, but a good statement piece. We're gonna do a really pretty sky. We've got the sun setting in the desert. We've got the palm trees. Super fun, super simple. I hope you came ready to have a good time. Now, let me go ahead and flip this around so you can see my surface. Now, if you purchased our paint kit, you will have a prepped canvas that has this image on it, which is really helpful to do. If you did not purchase our paint kit, you can print off the pattern and transfer the image yourself just as well, okay? Now I'm gonna use um, these specific brushes tonight. I've got a large flat. I've got, this is a number six round, and this isn't super necessary, but I feel like this will help me fill in my Wiseman easiest, especially with the legs. I won't have to switch between this one and a detail or a flat or a detail too much. So I'm going to use this one, but if you just have a smaller flat, that'll work too. I've got my detail brush, and then I've got a toothbrush for splattering the stars. If you don't have an old toothbrush laying around, you can use your flat. Um, you can also use just an old bristle brush. So those are the tools I'm going to use. I'm going to make sure I have two cups or jars of water handy, and we are going to dive right in. So what we're going to do is our sky first. Now I'm going to go pretty quickly on this because with acrylic paint, um, it only blends wet into wet. So as soon as it starts drying, I lose the blending opportunity. So I might go way fast for you. You can pause, you can listen and watch, and then pause and do your own. I'm also going to paint right through my Wiseman because these pencil lines should still show up. We're going to hope they do, okay? Here's my palette. I'm going to get my flat brush nice and wet. And then I'm going to start in my dark blue. And don't mind Sarah here. She's just going to make a TikTok while I do this because hashtag multitasking. Okay, so I'm mixing some blue with white. I still want a nice dark blue sky, but I want that white in there. So here we go. We're going to paint horizontal brush strokes. And that's really important. Um with our sky. And as I move down the canvas, I'm going to load white on my brush and I'm going to start to see those streaks happen. And notice how I brush up into the blue, dark blue, and then back down. Continue to load. Again, I'm working quite quickly because I want a blend to happen. I am not painting on a canvas so I don't need to wrap my edges but if you have a canvas make sure you're wrapping your edges as you go. So I'm getting these streaks by adding chunks of white to my brush as I go and then when it offloads it offloads in these fun streaks which I love. Gives it a nice sky light High light and low lights. Okay, about halfway done. We're going to tell Sarah to move and we're going to start loading some turquoise. Okay, I haven't washed my brush, turquoise and blue. Okay, you can see lots of water in there because I need that water in order to offload nice and smooth onto my canvas. I'm still going all the way up into my dark blue and down so that I can blend that really well. Okay, I don't want it to look like stripes. But as I come down now, I'm getting into my lighter sky. Okay, this is going to be where my sun is setting, where day is leaving. So I want to add a lot of white and just a little bit of turquoise as I come down. Nice. Moving my brush a lot because that's how I get 
a nice blend, remember? Only is going to blend wet into wet. So I'm going to keep moving my brush and I'm going to do this turquoise all the way until it's almost just white because my final color is going to be orange. And I don't want to mix turquoise and orange together. If I do, I will start to have a mud out situation. So at this point, I am going to wash my brush, okay? I want to get that blue and turquoise out a bit. I don't want to make mud on my beautiful sunset. Okay, so now I'm going to start from where the base, where my little camel feet are. I'm going to start with some orange, okay, and begin to blend into that turquoise. So our darkest shade now will be where our sun is setting and as we come to meet the turquoise we will lighten that up so that when we meet the turquoise it's nice and light almost white so that that light light color is coming through and we're not getting brown okay so I've got to keep water on my brush that's really important to get that good blend. So when you come to this point and you have that really harsh line there, put white on a corner of your brush and really just start to blend that section. Okay? Really want to lighten it. And it's okay if the orange goes into the turquoise and vice versa. You just don't want a ton of it to happen. Okay, I'm going to wash the orange out of my brush and put some of that light turquoise on there because now I want to make sure that I'm coming down and meeting this nicely. Nice blend without that stripe effect. Okay, so you can see that we're getting that now. Moving our brush quickly, getting a nice faded look. Anytime you're like, ooh, I've got too much of this on my brush or too much of that, you can wash that out and go back. Again, white is going to be your best friend in this situation. So use the white as needed. Okay, so we have a nice blended sky here. And remember, you're going to have a lot of silhouettes going on with your wise men and your palm trees. So don't be too harsh on your sky. Because in the end, we won't be seeing as much of it as it seems like we are seeing now. All right, so now I'm going to get my toothbrush. I'm going to dip it in water. And I am going to kind of just scrub that water into some paint, okay? It's crazy important that you use quite a bit of water. If your paint's too thick and you try to flick the stars in there, they won't come off your brush. Okay, so toothbrush, watered down white paint. I'm going to pull my thumb towards me as I flick my canvas. Just like that. Don't push it away from you or you're going to flick yourself. Flick some stars in there and there we go. We'll add some bigger stars in a minute. That's just our basic basic layer of stars. So a couple of things with the stars. I know what I just did was super fast. So let me just kind of go over a couple of things real quick. Okay. With the stars, make sure your paint is watered down. 
if you start to flick and nothing's coming off your brush, it means you need more um, water, okay? But if you have too much water, you're going to get a lot of shooting stars, and that can be frustrating too. If you flick your stars while your canvas is still wet, then you can easily blend that white into your background, and it'll be fine. But once it dries, you don't want to mess with it too much, okay? All right, so we have our sky in. Now let's switch to this brush. If your background is still wet when you start to fill in your silhouettes, it's okay if it's a little wet. If it's super wet, you want to wait till it dries. But if it's just a little sticky, that's okay because we're filling these in with black paint. Now I added some water to my black paint so it's nice and thin. This will help me when filling in my wise men. So let's start with our biggest one here. And I am just going to fill it in. Just like so. Again, I've chosen this uh, round brush to do this because I feel like I can get a lot of those areas with it without having to switch my brush. But you can also use a flat brush and then a detail brush to get up closer. That'll work too. Now I can still see my wise men enough to do this. If you have a hard time seeing them, you can take a minute and simply trace them on there again before you get started. That's totally fine as well. So now we're just Filling this in. I love doing silhouette paintings for this reason. You just have this beautiful background and then you get to make this statement which we're making with these wise men. And I, I had to create this with a lot of trial and error so I was able to paint quite a few camels in the process and I just found that their legs are so fun because you can't really mess up these wobbly knees. And I had a good time with that. Of course, this is our largest wise men. They get smaller as we go. Kind of a play on distance a little bit. If at any point you need to switch to your detail brush to get in here, that's totally fine too. I might do that as well as I'm going if I decide there are places that I just can't get, I might switch my brush. So I think I'll do that real quick with some of these camel details they have these specific little bumps on their head that I really want to get right. So I'm going to switch to my detail brush. There we go. Kind of clean that up a little bit.
So the nice thing about painting at home is you can kind of control the speed of which you're painting. So if this is too fast for you, you can of course pause the video. You can do this painting within a few days or hours. Don't feel like you have to keep the pace that I'm keeping here. Obviously, you can do your own thing. Each of my wise men have a little beard to some degree. But try to keep these silhouettes as simple as possible while still creating that iconic idea of these wise men walking, following the star. Okay, so the harness here is a freehand step. So you just kind of take your brush and do a nice couple of U shapes right there and you've got your first panel. I'm going to stick with this detail brush as I move to my smaller, my next size. Um, so maybe I could just outline it a little bit. That way I can get my image a little bit better before I fill it in. Just get those little details in. So then I can go with my other brush and easily do that. Get a better idea of where our cute camels are at here. go. And you're welcome to fill in all of the silhouettes with your detail brush. You might even feel com more comfortable doing that. Um, it is a little bit more time consuming and you won't get that nice flat brush stroke that a larger brush will give you. But if you are more comfortable with it, there's no reason not to do that. I'm going to get these lines in and some of these legs with this little one, and then I'll switch to my big one to kind of finish it off. As you can see, I'm just brushing into the base here. I'm not trying to have a clean ending to my brush stroke or anything like that because that's just going to be black here in a minute. Look at his little nose and this one has a little bit longer of a beard. I'll fill in the top here with this brush and I'll define his hat a little more. It's got a little more of a point up there. And then I'll just grab my round again, 
and this you can see you just quickly fill it in once you switch to that smaller or that larger brush. But you'll definitely be switching between both brushes for sure. Okay, so we're going to get a little hand holding on to those reins. So we come down here and we do a little point where those hands are. And then like I showed you before, you're just going to do a little swoop to get those in there. Just like that. So now we have two. And we've got one more to put in. And this one, <laughs> Miss Sarah's laughing at me because this one's a little harder to see. So the good news is yours was hopefully traced <laughs> in marker, which is typically what we do for the... Um, typically what we do for the silhouettes we'll trace them in marker I just did it in pencil so thank you it doesn't help that Miss Sarah is so close to me but like I said I had to do this painting so many times to get it right I feel like I could probably freehand these silhouettes but it is challenging me a little bit. Okay. So again, I'm using my little brush to kind of um, give myself an outline. But this little dude is so little, I'll probably just fill him, fill him in with this little brush. So they've got these little bumps that I don't even know what they're called on their head. And they've got a nice big, big lips right there. I really like to define those. I think it's a good time. <laughs> I love my sister, but <laughs> this is truly, you are truly in my space. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is it? Better be a freaking awesome TikTok. Mm -hmm. So I want each headpiece to be different. I'm going to add these little pokey things up here on this one. And then we're just going to fill this in. I really hate to use a detail brush to fill it in, but I don't see the point in switching brushes with this one because he's just so small. Let's go ahead and get these in here. Notice I like... Um, light pressure on the beginning of my stroke with those reins and then um, harder pressure as I get close to the neck. That way it just kind of um, gives that effect that they're in the distance. Again, these camels and their wobbly knees. I'm telling you, it's kind of fun to paint them. Just make sure they've got a nice neck sticking out there. And then their feet, of course, kind of, you know, they spread out at the bottom. So you kind of want to make sure they kind of go to a triangle down at the base and not a straight line. Now, if you're working on a canvas, your 
the grooves of your canvas are going to be really tricky to fill in when you're doing your little detail work. So a good trick to that is make sure your paint is diluted. If you can't do a nice brush stroke without your brush uh, stroke breaking, then you probably need to add water. So this guy needs a bigger bump. A bigger bump. <laughs> We're going to give him a bigger bump. Yeah, big bump. I am so glad you're here, Sarah. Yeah, so he needs he needs a bigger bump. I mean, poor guy was freehand here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to get rid of all the funky stuff happening at the bottom. We're going to go ahead and put in our sand line. So I'm just using my round brush, my number six, because it was full of paint anyway. So I love these parts because you can just clean up. You know, because those feet, they were bugging me. I mean, this guy looks like he's got a really big one. Now, if you're painting on a canvas, make sure you're wrapping your edges. You like to do that, right? And there we go. So we've got our wise men walking there walking, riding on their camels, and you could totally put your star in the sky and call it right here, because it's just perfect the way it is, but I wanted to add some palm trees, because we are in the desert, so I'm going to use my green round brush, and I'm going to put in two palm trees, okay? I've got black paint on my brush. I want a tall one, and I'm just going to go for it because you just have to. I want a tall one right here. Put that initial line in, and then you can go back, and you can kind of clean it up. Okay? Obviously, it needs to get thicker at the base. But don't be scared to just get that first line in there. Because truthfully, the more we slow down, the shakier we get. And this one kind of comes off the canvas a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to have a smaller one. And it's going to come about right here. And it's going to bend a little bit. Because we know palm trees like to bend. And I love painting palm trees. They are so fun once you get once you get the hang of it. If you're a little nervous, you can grab a piece of paper and practice one as I show you before you take it to canvas. That's totally acceptable. But what you want to do is like make a starfish on the top of this tree trunk you just made. Again, make sure your paint is nice and diluted. And we're going to start with our big one. And we're going to maybe even start a little further down because I want you to see. And this one might come out a little bit. So I'm going to start a little further down. Typically, I'd start up here. One. We are just making a starfish, okay? And then we're going to flick our brush downwards. Because these palm fronds, as they're called, which I hate saying, are hanging down. 
So you're just going to curve and let your brush bristles just kind of separate and make that nice leafy texture. And these are going to get crazy up here because I've got my clip on. So you just keep going. And then if your branch is bending the other direction, you bend with it. So you can see now we're bending the other way. And just picture the wind blowing these, okay? Blowing them down. They're sagging. We have one more right here. And then you've got a palm tree. So they're pretty simple to do once you get the hang of it, okay? Let's do another one right here. And they're going to meet here in this other tree, but that's okay. And again, we're just going to bend with our branch here. Wherever that branch is bending, we're going to go. And if you're not able to do these brush strokes, then I'm guessing your paint isn't thin enough. So check the paint consistency you've got. Thin it out if you need to. And those two branches will kind of meet right there. Mm, this one will as well. And then we've got our last branch. And I know, again, this is really fast. I totally get that. This is muscle memory kicking in for me, is what it is. So pause the video. Like I said, practice if you want to. I'm going to add a few. Once you do a tree, if you step back and you feel like it needs another branch, you can always put one more in. You know, you can always add. So no shame in that. All right. Wise men are traveling. Let's put in the star that they are following. I'm going to make sure my detail brush is nice and clean. Because I was using black with it, so I need it to be really clean for my star. I'm going to get in some white paint. Make sure I've got some clean water on my brush. So I can thin that white paint out a little bit. Just like so. And I'm going to put my star in the sky. We want it to be slightly in front of the wise men because they are following the star, correct? So just make a nice, as straight as you can line. Basically, you're making a T. And then you're going to put an X through the T. Just like that. And there's your star. I mean... We can do hard things. So I want to add some bigger stars in the sky. Obviously, we don't want to outdo that star. But let's use the bottom of our brush. And let's just dot in some bigger stars. So let me tell you the secret to making sure your stars don't look like falling snow. Okay, the secret is to bunch some of them up. Okay. So stars are kind of in clusters. So you see how I'm kind of clustering some? This will help it. This will help ensure that you're not making falling snow. 
because it's not snowing. It's not snowing in the desert here. That would truly be a Christmas miracle, probably. So you don't want to start down in our sunset, right? We want to keep it up there. Around our palm trees. So just some bigger stars, it just kind of adds to it, as you can see. Adds to our starry night, so I like to do that. You guys, this is so fast. We are on the home stretch here. But basically, we're just going to add some highlights into our into our wise men here. So I've got my detail brush again, and I'm going to take some of that turquoise and blue mixture, and I'm going to add some white to it. So I'm complementing the sky with that kind of sea blue color. Okay, and I'm going to use this to highlight my wise men. I, I will never allow this again. <laughs> Who's ever watching this, bless you for being here. We are... <laughs> The hot mess that you see is the hot mess that you get, okay? <laughs> we cannot hide. We cannot hide who we are. All right, so I'm going to add some highlights. This is what I'm doing, Sarah. It's what I'm doing. Are you ready? I'm glad. I've got my detail brush with my bluish turquoise color so I can complement the light in the sky. And let's just add a few, okay? Let me go up in this hat. I mean, he kind of has an Aladdin feel to him, but I'm rolling with it because it's the desert and I feel like that goes, right? All right, we're gonna do a little bit. Don't miss this shot, Sarah. And do a little bit right there. You're doing good. I, I think our people would appreciate that. No. All right, so this is when you can kind of pull some of the legs to the front and keep some to the back. So you can kind of like, oh, well, that was a thick line. But you get my point here. We're pulling some forward. This one will show you a little better. So now you can see what leg is in the front versus the back. Yeah. If you have a line like this that you're just not loving, the good news is you can cover it with black and then you can go over it again. But I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it because this is real life. All right, so we're going to get this dude in here. his camel. And you can see these, these bits of white. They just kind of pop off these wise men. I love it. Add it where you want. Don't add it if you don't. In the end, it's your painting. All right? You ought to be happy with it. We are big fans of adding the light to our paintings. It really just brightens them up. And it's fun. Fun little addition. Look at our little kneecaps. You know, got to pay tribute to those knees. Okay, so I want to do a little bit in my trees too. So I'm just going to kind of come down a little bit. And this really doesn't have to be perfect. 
I don't want a whiteout situation, which can happen. This tree, I just pulled it to the foreground. Do you see how that happens? You pull it to the foreground, and now we know which tree is in the front, which is in the back. Anyway, I don't want to totally white out my fronds here. Okay, so I'm just going to add little bits. Might even offload my brush a little bit so I don't add too much. I'm just complementing that light just a little bit. Just very light pressure, feather-like pressure. And don't load your brush too much. That way you can not have a whiteout situation, which we don't want. This is not during the day, this is at night. Pull a little black back on here. All right. Maybe even right here some. So if you have any areas where you're like, whoa, I overdid the white, just go back. Pull it back a little bit. I'm going to use my, I actually have this red flat here. I haven't even used it yet. You can use your big flat as well. I'm going to load it with black paint. I bit a corner of that light blue we just highlighted with, and I'm going to come across my little sand, sandy hill that they're crossing here or they're walking on. Again, I'm just taking the opportunity add light, but I don't want to white anything out. So don't overdo it. Just adding some light. All right, let's sign our name. I think that we just painted this beautiful scene. I hope yours turned out well. I would love to see it, of course. But don't forget to sign your name. You gotta tell the world. We painted this and we're super proud of it. And so that's why we sign our name. Um, send us your pictures of your paintings so we can see how they turn out. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give us a thumbs up. Um, and we hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.